Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. This week's guest, a dear friend, a composer, an entrepreneur, a father, and a deputy sheriff, Mr. Brian Wisda. Hello. You happy to be here? I am. You it's probably good to see won't you. say that an hour from now. No, I'm, it's good to see you. I don't get to see you enough. Because we're going to talk operating stuff. We're going to talk man stuff. We're just going to get crazy here. You want some caffeine? I've got a rock star. Outstanding. Uh, <laughs> Let her rip. Rockstar, he mentioned your name. Send a check. You know what So it, it, you're still in the financial product business, aren't you? So uh, in 2015, so I, I ultimately left Payne Weber after a number of years, uh, went to work for a boutique wealth management firm, uh, ended up buying out my, we'll call it territory, if you will, uh, in 2012, and ultimately sold it in 2015 uh, right after I went to work for the sheriff's office. And I, I joke that I quasi-retired. But yeah, no, I, I do still have my foot in the uh, financial world. Uh, I have an insurance agency that does group health insurance for small businesses and life insurance for just one-off situations. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, Needed. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've got a network of people that call me up and go, hey, can you help me out? I'm not going to say no. Absolutely. And you talk about work. You're deputy sheriff. Yes. So you work in a specialized area. So that means in the summertime you work seventy hours a week. I was a little more than that this 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 summer. Was it? Had, okay. Yeah, we're so short. Seventy hours a week, and then the insurance business takes you approximately how many hours a week? Probably twenty. Wow. Okay. And then you've got a family. I do. Two boys. Two boys. Twelve uh, and twelve and nine. And somehow, with all that going on, in two thousand sixteen, you managed to teach yourself how to play the guitar. Or up your skills. How'd that work? Well, so uh, after I got injured, uh, I was laid up for about three months. And I'm sitting there playing, you know, MLB The Show on PlayStation, you know, eight hours a day. And my wife comes to me and says, no, uh -uh, this is not going to fly. You are not going to sit here and play PlayStation for the next three or four months or however long you're laid up. So she said, you need to go get a hobby. And the best thing I could think of while I was sitting there was to learn how to play the guitar, which I'd always wanted to do. And she, you know, she threw the added thing in, you know, you learn to play the guitar, it's sexy. And, you know, she made promises to me that if I learned, I'd... Uh, uh, I she, like Those her. promises may or may not have been fulfilled. Um, they were. Um, so I, I fell in love with it and became an avid student of the guitar and music theory. And uh, that's kind of how I got progress down the whole whole path. Okay, so I'm going to jump back a little bit. You said that when you got injured. Uh, I will never forget that night. I know you'll never forget that I night. I will never forget that night. Uh, I was in bed, and I got the have that privacy setting on my phone. Right. Uh, and it, but you have to call me three times for the call to come through. Somebody called you six. And, it went, yeah, and when that came through, I'm like 12 mixed, missed texts. And, um, boy... It's happened a lot in my time volunteering with the sheriff's office and being around cops my whole life. Uh, I couldn't brush my teeth and throw a hat on fast enough and get to the, get to the trauma center. Now, I'm sneaky. I, I want to see with my own eyes. They can tell me you're okay. Well, I, I made my way back and snuck around and saw that you were going to be okay. Yeah. And I made my way to the other room where I held court and entertained everybody once we knew you were going to be all right. So but you can't scare me like that again because when – Brian hasn't shared with you is when he got injured, he actually got shot in the line of duty. Now, he had every right to sit at home and play PlayStation. If your wife is listening, I, I, I don't know why I said that. I'm going to blame it on caffeine. But not only is it amazing that that critical incident in your life turned into a new hobby, uh, I think what came out of that is a miracle, and you're helping, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of kids if we haven't reached them already. And folks, you got to know that he lot, turned himself, taught himself how to play the guitar with some help. Then he addressed a critical need in his family. He has a son who has ADHD, correct, yep. and has trouble getting to sleep. And if and I don't have kids, that's why I'm able to smile as much as I do. But I understand that you know that's got to be because I was one of those kids that was a pain in the butt to get to sleep at night. 
Okay. So I understand when you first shared with me about the hours and the time it took to get this young man to go to sleep. And you took the guitar, and what did you do? So uh, just we'll kind of touch on my oldest son. His name is Kale. Um, he has a pretty good case of ADHD. Not the worst, not the, not the best, if that's even the way to describe it. And when he was about uh, eight years old, we made the decision that putting him on ADHD medication was the right thing for him and our family. And, and please understand, you know, I get, I get a lot of criticism from people, oh, you stuck your kid on Ritalin. No, 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 no. You know, when I was a kid in the 80s and 90s, you know, the kids on Ritalin were sitting in the back of the room like, you know, drool running down their mouth, and they were just uh, total zombies. And that is not the case anymore. The medications that they're using today are are really set up very, very well. They're very well researched. And these are happy, adjusted kids who are making friends, they're doing great in school. Uh, the unfortunate side effect of these medications, and it is a stimulant medication, uh, it's a derivative of, of a methamphetamine uh, that they use. And I, I can explain how it works if you really want me to get into it, but uh, I'll probably bore your, your listeners on all of that end, is late in the day, they go through a homeostasis imbalance. And essentially, think of this as being a massive dose of caffeine on time release all day long. So they're on this time release dose of massive caffeine all day long. And in a, in a very strange way, when the body's pushed up like that, and I have an understanding of all this because one of the things I do for the sheriff's office is I, I'm a drug recognition expert and I investigate uh, vehicular homicides. Let me put my glasses on. From an so you impairment don't check standpoint. My, I'm kidding. Yeah, let me, so I don't check your pupil <laughs> yes, sizes, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, so they go through this late in the day homeostasis imbalance because the medication works by pushing the body up and stimulate it all the while what the brain wants to do is maintain its normalcy and the brain then pulls the body down and really what it's doing is pulling the, the brain functioning down so you get this normalization of the brain. Well when the medication wears off the brain doesn't realize the medication's worn off yet and essentially what happens is the body crashes and the brain is still going, wait, this medication's still oh, in me. Right. And it's pull, it's, the brain is still pulling it down until it gets to this point where like, uh-oh, we just went way too far. And all of a sudden, it kicks on on you know, whatever endorphins or serotonin or whatever it releases. And then the body goes through this massive correction. And so that is where you get these kids who have ADHD, who are on stimulant medications, who are just wide awake. Wide awake. And it's a struggle. For years, my wife and I would sit in his room just to keep him from getting out of bed. You know, he'd got to go pee, have to get water, he'd want to play with Legos, he'd need something else to eat. And I mean, it just went on and on and on. So you can imagine as a, as a, as a married couple who's trying to have a relationship together in the evening, that's ruined. Your kid is not getting the sleep they need and you're projecting your own frustrations exactly. upon them, and it's it's a it's a bad situation. And maybe not maybe bad's a, a strong word, but it's it's a situation where uh, there needs to be a solid solution. And unfortunately, the medical world would say, "Well, we'll just put them on a different, another medication." A so, knock them out medicine. A knock them out medicine. And usually, the progression that most parents go through is they're like, "Okay." We'll try a weighted blanket. Oh. Yeah, you know, you get this 50-pound blanket on the kid, and it's like it's almost like handcuffs for a 60-pounder, <laughs> right? And some and look, and, and please understand, if, if you have a kid with ADHD and you found that thing that works to help get your kid to sleep, great, phenomenal. I don't care what it is. If you found the thing, that's all that matters. So if it's a weighted blanket, great. Weighted blanket didn't work for us. Then we tried lavender pillows. You know, like these eye masks that have lavender in them, they're supposed to calm the kid down. Yeah, that didn't work either. Uh, we blacked out the room. We'd put on Mozart. We'd put on Rocket by Baby. We'd put on any product we could get our hands on to try to get our kid to sleep, and nothing worked for our child. Ouch. And so he's getting frustrated. And uh, and he's aware of it because a little video clip is uh, he's, it's so endearing, and he, but your heart breaks for him. When he talks about using his, uh, um, his, Rubik's, his Rubik's cubes, right. he's had a doesn't he say I, I focus on these to try to go to sleep? Yeah, and then those cards, 
and he holds those three precious playing. I don't know what type of cards. Oh, those they're are. like uh, Pokemon. And he just or... and he just is so proud of those. But you can tell he he knows that there's something going on. He does. So uh, anyway, while I after, what we what I did one night is I went in and I you know so I I I'd be in there for hours and so I take my guitar in and I play try to play him a lullaby like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star Brahms Lullaby or something of that kind of general nature, and that didn't really work either. And one night, um, kind of out of desperation, I found on YouTube a video of, it's almost like a TV test tone, huh. okay? And it does not sound good. And I put him on, on for him, and he, he's like, oh, God, that's horrible. So I found a, you know something different, kind of in that new agey kind of category where it's like spa music with some science in it kind of deal. And uh, as an 80s kid, I can relate to all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. We did all that. Yeah, all that stuff. Laguna Beach, meditation music, waves crashing, subliminal messages. White hmm. noise, pink noise, you know, blue noise. I don't know, there's not a blue noise, but white and pink noise. And so what I found was is if I, I found this one tone that I really liked, or I should say that he, it, he would tolerate, and I took my guitar in one day, and I started playing over it. So I just started playing chords, and that didn't work so well. The next night, I played random notes. Okay, and it, it, did you ever study music as a kid? I did. What did you play? Nothing. Okay. But I did study music. <laughs> uh, my childhood, while wonderful, they tell me, and there's some great pictures of I have very few <laughs> memories. But I, think, I, did I think to, the CIA cleared your memory. I did oh, have to, my goodness. Well, we, that's been alleged by more than one person on this show. <laughs> and we'll need you to look at this little thing here, and right. we'll wipe that out. And we'll, All right, uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, my goodness. He's uh, older than me. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so you're playing this music. No, go back. So anyway, I was playing. so I started playing random notes, just notes and scales and doing string keeping exercises. And I look up, and the little, little kid's asleep. I'm like, oh, that's strange. Uh. Ooh, wait a second. Let's try this again tomorrow. That gives me chills just thinking about it. Right, that. right. So we're like, well, let's try this tomorrow. So I did. It worked. I'm like, huh. And then I started playing around with various iterations of it. And I got talking to a friend of mine who's in the Army. Uh, he's a college friend of mine. He's a psychiatrist. Uh, he's one of those guys that invents, like, you ever, you ever worked um, a riot or anything like that where they bring out the loudspeakers and yes. they start playing the awful noises and it like messes with people's heads. He does that kind of stuff for the army. Hmm. Wow. Okay. And I got talking to him. I'm like, hey, you're the only psychiatrist I know that's not going to charge me 250 to pick up the phone. Why does this work for my kid? And what we figured out was that the playing of these random notes while playing over a chord progression. So what ultimately, the iteration that ultimately came to work the best for him was random notes played over a chord progression with these tones in the background. And what he said was, you're, it's kind of like being at church and you got that one dude at church who's clapping out of time, <laughs> right? Which right is probably, his name's Ed. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, That's so uh, what he said was, is that it's like being in church and you got that one guy who's clapping out of time and all you can focus on is that one guy. And he goes, essentially what you're doing is you're occupying his mind and keeping it from wandering, which is allowing that underlying tone to increase its efficacy. Wow. And I'm taking one of these home and I'm going to try it on myself tonight. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it might work. <laughs> it might work. So, and it got a little deeper than that. We found some very specific tones that uh, work the best. Actually, there's three separate tones that are embedded in the music. And then we set it to the average sleeping heart rate of my son. Now, what he's not told you huh. is that at the time of this taping, you're at 14 weeks, 15 weeks on the Billboard chart. Yeah. So this has not only helped one child, it is available online. You can get the hard copy. You can do something called streaming, something called downloading. This is not only helping his child and helping restore his family life and giving his son a good night's rest. It's helping hundreds, if not thousands of people. You get testimonials daily. Daily. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are, are incredibly moving. 
You have to understand that when one of us gets hurt, we all get hurt. And we don't know what to say, we don't know what to do, we don't have the right words. And so doing the things like putting on a car wash, or putting on a barbecue, or bringing dinner to the families, or whatever it is, it's kind of like our community's way of saying, not only are we here for you, we're sorry this happened to you, and we're gonna make sure you're taken care of.